Good evening and welcome to Emirates News. We're coming to you from Dubai. Your news, business and sport are on the way. But first, the headlines tonight. India's Civil Aviation Authority begins its investigation into the crash landing of an Air India Express plane that departed from Dubai over the weekend. A UAE plane carrying 40 tonnes of critical medical aid and food supplies arrives in Beirut. In the business tonight, the UAE Central Bank approves additional measures to support the economy. And in the sport, the new look UAE football team continue their overseas training camp. The squad arrived in Serbia last week and the new head coach is still putting his players through their paces. Investigations have begun into the cause of the crash of the Air India plane that left Dubai over the weekend. Most of the passengers were returning from Dubai to Kerala in the wake of the global health pandemic. Raz Javed has more on the ill-fated flight and its investigation. India's Civil Aviation Authority announced today that it has started the official investigation into the crash landing of an Air India Express plane over the weekend that killed 18 people including the two pilots. A formal investigation has begun, but since it was a Boeing aircraft and they are the original manufacturers of equipment, the investigation team is in touch with them as well and they will also be involved in the investigation. The aviation body also said that the black box as well as the transcript of the conversation between the pilots and air traffic controller as well as other circumstantial evidence have been recovered. The effort is to retrieve the two black boxes that has been done and it is advisable never to speculate because all the data which is required for the investigation will be contained in those black boxes and I'm sure the precise or whatever caused, whatever be the contributing factors, immediate cause, all that will be known. The Air India Express plane IX-1344, which was repatriating Indians stranded in Dubai due to the coronavirus pandemic, overshot the runway of the Calicut International Airport in heavy rain near the southern city of Kodikor on Friday. This B-737 aircraft which landed, I am informed, at 7.41 p.m. in the evening. It was bearing registration number VTAXH. It overshot the runway at Kozi Kode while trying to land amidst what is clearly inclement weather conditions prevailing at that time. Second day During the second landing attempt, the tyre skidded. On the left side, there was a huge ditch. It was over 36 feet, so there was a sudden break. All the people were wearing seat belts, so we kept our hands on the seat in front of us and tried to save ourselves. The plane went inside the ditch and broke into two halves and opened up. According to reports, the fatalities could have been much worse if not for the actions of residents who live nearby, as they were the first to reach the crash site before rescue teams arrived. So we came to this road and we are seeing the one aircraft is fallen down and it's broken as two pieces. So when we came to this gate area and we are hearing noise from the inside and people are uh, begging for uh, please save us, please save us like that we are hearing. Um, some of them uh, fracture is done and some of them uh, head is broken and uh, uh, that uh, uh, hands also like that lot of cases are there and some of them the mostly people uh, who are sitting the back side of the aircraft they are mostly saved and uh, uh, whoever is in the uh, that front area they are mostly injured and uh, who has died in this case but the plane crash was not the only concern for the rescue workers the airport area had previously been listed as a dangerous area for the coronavirus. And so far, two passengers rescued from the wreckage have tested positive for COVID-19. 
That's why the authorities in Korikor have asked all relevant personnel involved in the rescue to immediately self-isolate and undergo COVID-19 testing. This is India's worst passenger aircraft accident since 2010, when an Air India Express flight also from Dubai overshot the runway and slid down a hill while landing in Mangalore, killing 158 people. For as Javed, Emirates News. A UAE plane carrying 40 tons of critical medical aid and food supplies, as well as nutritional supplements for children, arrived in Beirut over the weekend. The aid will support the victims of the massive explosion that rocked the Lebanese capital last week, putting more pressure on a healthcare sector that was already overwhelmed by COVID-19 patients. The ERC rushed to provide the assistance from the country's Strategic Emergency Relief Reserve. A comprehensive-based humanitarian plan has been put in place in response to the crisis. During this stage, the focus is on providing medical supplies to Lebanese health facilities to help them respond to the needs of the large number of victims. The response plan includes a significant amount of assistance and psychological support for children since many of the victims were young. And Dubai welcomed some of its Lebanese residents back to the UAE today with white roses as a gesture of support. There are hundreds of thousands of Lebanese expatriates living and working in the UAE. The UAE today announced 225 new cases of the coronavirus. This brings the total number of infections in the country to over 62,000. The Ministry of Health and Prevention also announced 323 new recoveries, taking the total number of recoveries across the country to more than 56,000. One new fatality has been reported, taking the death tally to 357. Citizens and residents of Alain City have expressed their appreciation for the UAE leadership's efforts to ensure their health and safety. In a video posted on Twitter by the Abu Dhabi media office, both Emiratis and expatriates are seen praising the COVID-19 home testing initiative, which comes as part of the country's national screening program. A team of highly trained medical professionals are seen going door to door to test everyone residing in Alain as they fight to contain the spread of the virus in the country. Meanwhile, Abu Dhabi Public Health Centre and the Department of Health Abu Dhabi have launched a fleet of mobile clinics across the Emirate. It has a special focus on the elderly and individuals with chronic diseases who are more prone to contracting the virus. The clinics will facilitate access to healthcare services, including routine health checkups and lab tests for elderly people and individuals with chronic diseases. The program has been launched to ensure the health and safety of the entire community in curbing the spread of COVID-19. The initiative will brief individuals on how to use the remote healthcare platform, as well as monitoring the cases that need immediate care and transferring them to a healthcare facility based on medical necessity. And Abu Dhabi's Department of Health has also created specialist teams in their efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19. The field teams of medical professionals will travel to areas of reported outbreaks to carry out specific epidemiological surveillance in those areas. The Al Dafra region of Abu Dhabi was one of the first to be visited by the team. In the event of a concentrated spike in cases, the team is sent out to ensure that all necessary measures are taken to safeguard the health and safety of all residents in that area. Taking a look at the global COVID-19 numbers now, and there are currently more than 19.6 million people infected around the world. That's according to Johns Hopkins University, who says that more than 727,000 people have died from the virus. The US has the highest number of infections at just under 5 million and a death toll of more than 162,000. Brazil has more than 3 million cases now and more than 100,000 fatalities. India is the third worst affected country with over 2.1 million infections and over 43,000 deaths. 
Russia is next with over 885,000 cases and more than 14,500 deaths. And South Africa rounds off the top five hardest hit countries in the world with over 553,000 infections and more than 10,000 deaths. In other news back here in the UAE, government workers in Dubai will soon be able to take advantage of flexible working hours thanks to a new announcement from the Dubai Government Human Resources Department. From August the 16th, government employees will be able to choose to start work anytime from 6.30am to 8.30am, as long as they complete the set number of official working hours per day. It is hoped the move will improve employees' quality of living, reduce their leave days and cut down on traffic congestion during peak hours. Employees who interact with the public or those who work on a shift basis will not be eligible for the new working hours. The UAE has called on the international community to boost efforts to tackle the links between terrorism and organised crime. This includes strengthening legal frameworks and implementing relevant UN resolutions. In a written statement to the UN Council, the UAE said, The UAE's financial intelligence units are trained and equipped with the tools necessary to analyse and investigate suspicious transactions. Furthermore, the central bank is providing anti-money laundering training at the national and regional levels, in addition to implementing measures to address emerging challenges relating to terrorist financing. Authorities in the UAE have helped reunite a Yemeni Jewish family who endured 15 years of separation. They helped facilitate the travel of family members from Yemen to the UAE and also made arrangements for their relatives in London to join them. The family members told the national news agency WAM that the reunion was nothing short of a miracle and the realisation of an impossible dream. The father of the family said, I feel as if I was were reborn today. I'm so happy to have met all my children and grandchildren. I'm also overjoyed to be in the UAE, the land of tolerance, coexistence and goodness. Time now for the news in brief and several people have been treated in hospital for smoke inhalation after a large fire broke out in Abu Dhabi's Al Nayan area over the weekend. Abu Dhabi civil police evacuated the residential building and brought the blaze under control. Police say the fire broke out on the seventh floor of the tower. Investigations into the cause of the fire are continuing. Meanwhile, a woman has been rescued by helicopter after suffering from exhaustion while hiking on Rasahima over the weekend. Rak police and Rak Air Wing rescued the 25-year-old Pakistani woman on Saturday afternoon after she couldn't climb down Shorka Mountain. Officials say she was suffering from heat exhaustion and transferred her to Al Daid Hospital for treatment. And avid astronomers will be turning their eyes to the UAE skies on Wednesday night, when up to 60 meteors and shooting stars are expected to be visible thanks to the annual Perseid meteor shower. The Dubai Astronomy Group will have a special event in Al Qudra Desert to enjoy the spectacle at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. Masks and social distancing will be mandatory at all times. The RTA has opened five new bridges leading to the Dira Islands project. The flyovers, spanning more than two and a half kilometres in length, have a total capacity of 20,700 vehicles per hour. They provide access points to and from Dira Islands at the intersection of Al Khalij and Abu Bakr Al Siddiqui streets. The bridges are a key part of the Al Shindanga corridor project, stretching 13 kilometres along the Sheikh Rashid, Al Mina, Al Khalij, and Cairo streets. Time now for a short break, but stay with us here on Emirates News as we join Greg Fairley at the Business Desk. Katie, thanks very much. The UAE Central Bank has approved additional measures to support the economy in a move aimed at encouraging banks to enhance direct economic support for customers. That story and the rest of the business on the way when we continue.
We'll go back to Emirates News, our top story tonight. India's Civil Aviation Authority announced today that it has started the official investigation into the crash landing of an Air India Express plane which departed from Dubai over the weekend. It killed 18 people, including the two pilots. And now it's time for the business with Greg Fairley. The UAE Central Bank have approved additional measures to support the economy. The incentives are part of the targeted economic support scheme, which was launched back in March of this year to enhance the capacity of local banks to help individuals and companies affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The move is aimed at encouraging banks to enhance their implementation of the economic support plan for customers. These measures will be effective until December 31st, 2021. The objective is to ensure that long-term assets are funded by stable sources of financing. The UAE is projected to see a significant economic recovery with a growth rate of 4.1% in 2021. That's according to a report by Fitch Solutions. The study shows that the UAE is among countries including the US, South Korea and Poland, which will achieve a strong economic recovery next year. Fitch Solutions expect that the UAE will maintain an average growth of 4.1% from 2021 to 2024. The economic rebound in the UAE is set to be driven by OPEC plus production cuts and the Expo 2020 Dubai set to start in October 2021. Dubai Tourism is set to partner with Microsoft to streamline services for clients through cloud computing. With a growing focus on the use of technology, one goal is to enhance the e-learning platform for Dubai College of Tourism and adopt an innovative approach towards showcasing the city as a must-visit destination. The wide scope of collaboration is largely based on using what is called the Azure cloud platform, which provides a range of services from computing to networking, databases to analytics and artificial intelligence designed to help organizations run their digital systems and processes more efficiently. The main developer of Dubai Motor City, Union Properties, has announced the completion of its three-year strategic blueprint plan, which includes a timeline to launch its new project, Motor City Hills. The development will cover approximately 2.9 million square feet and will include 195 residential villas, 490 townhouses and six commercial plots. The company is expected to start sales upon finalising all regulatory fr framework before launch. Ajman's Department of Economic Development has announced the opening of all economic activities for those wishing to work from home. The Riyadh program is the first of its kind in Ajman, targeting Emiratis residing in the Emirate. It enables them to work from home and so far 115 have registered for the program. Economic activities were expanded for the Riyadh members after being restricted to 120 types of work. Registration in the program is available through the Department of Economic Development website. A major architectural event is set to open here in Dubai in November this year, running alongside Dubai Design Week. Located at D3, the three-day event has been described as an architectural festival. Officials say that the inaugural event will be the first of its kind to focus on regional architecture, urbanism and sustainable development. This year, it will run under the theme of identity, context and placemaking in the Gulf. The festival will include a series of talks on sustainable design and interactive workshops, as well as an exhibition on projects from the likes of Binchy and Binchy and An Architect. And that is your business tonight. Join me tomorrow when we'll be finding out about the technology behind contactless systems in airports. Now back to Katie. Thanks, Greg. Now, there could be a new way for us to communicate during the pandemic. An American company has created machines the size of a phone booth to beam live holograms right into your living room, enabling users to talk in real time. Amel Al-Jabri reports. 
Zoom calls have played a crucial part of our communication, especially during the pandemic. But they may very well be a thing of the past once this new device grows in popularity. It's all about holograms. A machine made by Portal Inc. lets users talk in real time with a life-sized hologram of another person right inside their homes. This gives people the ability to beam in front of any one, any sum, or any number of groups of people in, in real time. Uh, they can stand as close as they want. They could interact without wearing masks. Um, and it basically does give some dimension and some uh, you know, uh, volumetric effect to Zoom. Each portal device can be plugged into a standard wall outlet and a hologram can be sent to the machine by anyone with a camera and a white background. The machine uses a 4K resolution, transparent touchscreen LCD positioned right inside of a museum quality light box. So just to the left and to the right of my head are my head level left and right stereo speakers so that when I'm talking, the sound looks like or sounds like it's coming right out of my face. Uh, directly above my head is a camera that sees the audience that I'm being beamed in front of. In real time, I can beam anywhere, and this would give me the ability to hear, see, and interact with the audience that I'm being beamed in front of. Users can also interact with recorded holograms of historical figures or relatives who have passed away. Prices for the machine start at $60,000, a cost that Nussbaum expects will drop over the next three to five years. The company is also offering a smartphone app to allow people to become a hologram for others who own a unit. As unusual as it appears, it's certainly a unique way of feeling that person's presence and body language, even though they were not even there, regardless of them being thousands of miles away or in a different realm altogether. Amal Al Jabri, Emirates News. Time now for a short break, but stay with us here on Emirates News as we hand over to Graham Clues for the latest in sports. Thank you, Katie. Coming up, UAE rugby clubs have now been told what's required if they want to be involved in the new domestic season. And the UAE football team are in Serbia for a training camp that will continue for a while longer yet.